Well, hello there everybody, it's Sally Cathcart here and welcome to another Teaching Tips with me. So, I thought this week I'd talk a little bit about teaching teenagers. It's been a subject in October that we've been looking at in the Curious Piano Teachers and come up with some, some really interesting thoughts, ideas, sharing and suggestions and repertoire. And we had a, a great webinar actually on the topic of teaching teenagers last week. So I just wanted to share with you just one or two little insights from that. And it, it's, uh, it's such an important time for, um, for children, adolescents as they develop these teenage years. And I don't know whether you remember back, remember back to when you were a teenager. A lot of us do. A lot of us have really strong memories of that. And that's because it's a very emotional time. And we understand now in a way that we didn't probably 20 years ago that the teenage brain is by no means um, stable and fully formed. We understand that the teenage brain is undergoing rapid development, almost as rapid as, it, as, it, as the brain when it first develops up to the age of five. So the teenage brain, there's lots of new connections forming across the brain and particularly in the front part of the brain, which is uh, the part that's responsible for reasoning, logical behavior, etc. So this is really coming on board, which is why they are beginning to be able to uh, think things through in deeper ways. And the, the way that the reason why teaching in itself has to be different for teenagers. However, behind all that logical reasoning coming, um, the emotional um, side of the brain is very strong still. And it will just take over. It will just flood their brain. So they have no logic. They have all this coming on board, but they don't always know how to how to work with it. And I think that's a, such an important thing for us to remember that the teenage brain is closely linked to the emotions and which is why they can go from one mood to another. And they have no control over it. They have no control. So just keep in mind your own experiences as you as a teenager and how, you know, life just seemed to be a big turmoil. That's one, one idea for, for teaching teenagers, that you're never quite sure what you're going to get. And really, that's, that's the second thing I wanted to point out, was be prepared to go with the flow. So if they come into a lesson, having not done any practice, it might not be because they are lazy or just not motivated. It could be that you know things have just been going on for them and actually they haven't been able to get there or the motivation hasn't been there. Now, be prepared in these situations to change the lesson plan. Don't be so fixed as you are, say, with the younger ones where you really are guiding them through. Teaching a teenager is much more of a dual sharing thing or actually three way sharing still with the parents out there. But often you, the teacher, have a different relationship to the parent and the teenager. They'll often tell you stuff that maybe the parents aren't, aren't knowing, yeah? Because by this point, you are a special person in their life if they started lessons with you at six. Anyhow, that's another matter altogether. So be prepared to go with the flow, and I would say particularly with repertoire. Now, it can be really hard to find the right repertoire to motivate them at this, at this period in time. But it's essential. It's absolutely essential that you do find it. Now... If a piece doesn't seem to be working, if, it, if it's not being practiced, if they don't seem to be really enjoying it, then it's time to put that piece away. Nevertheless, you can always talk about what they have learned from it, but then open up a conversation. What would they like to learn? Ask them to go and find something to bring back to their lesson that can or, or sometimes isn't successful, but it's, it's getting them involved in their own learning. And I know I and, and quite a few of the other teachers who were on the webinar last week, we spent a long time looking for pieces of music that we think this pupil is going to really like and get switched on by. And one of my teenage students certainly um, found this when she, she was learning piece of music, wasn't working, this was when she was about 13 or 14, and I spent some time looking at pieces and presented her with a piece actually that was, that was beyond her level. But she absolutely loved it. And, you know, it helped her to come out of the plateau that she'd be on, been on and get up to that next level. And often music can do that. It's a bit too hard for them, but it, they love it so much that they will go on. 
and um, she's just taken a grade seven and is going on into grade eight and and is just loving forget about grades she's just loving playing the piano and she is able to sort of see herself playing the piano when she leaves school which is the end of this year and beyond university and things and that's what i'm really wanting i'm wanting them to love music for life not for the exam so the third thing i want to just say um, about this is that as a teacher teaching teenagers so i say you have this long relationship with them so you need to be steady you need to be reliable and you need to be predictable i think they need to know that you are a responsible adult at this point. So there's no good going off the handle because they haven't practiced. Just, they need to know what to expect from you. So just try and be as steady, reliable, and predictable as you can be for them so that they don't have that guessing game. You need to be the adult in the room. So just three of the many ideas that we, we were throwing around last week, um, this idea about being a steady, predictable adult for them, um, that just keep in mind that their brains are wiring up furiously and that causes quite a lot of chaos for them that they don't quite know how to handle, especially emotionally. And that we have to be prepared to go with the flow regarding repertoire and, and other things as well. And if we do all those things and put lots of other uh, other things in place for them, we're going to get them over that difficult period, which it can be, where they begin to lose an interest. And we want to keep them hooked into music, whatever kind it is that they want to do, so they are musicians for life, even if it's just through listening, but they have a love for music. Well, I hope you found that helpful. Thank you so much for, for watching and uh, I'll see you again hopefully next week. We'll see. Bye bye.